Hello, and welcome to another episode of Retrospective Gaming. In this episode, we'll be covering Mountain Blade Warband, the second game in the series, in the Mountain Blade series. Now, when, I, when my friend first advised me to get this game, I didn't know anything about it. But when I first played this game, I was addicted. I mean, for a week straight. Whatever time I had to play video games, it was Mountain Blade Warband and nothing else. This game is freaking amazing. The single player and multiplayer is both amazing and I was addicted for hours straight. And this game really proves that you don't have to be a big company to make an amazing game. Now on to Mountain Blade Warband. The story in this game is hard to explain. Why? Well, because it's up to you to make your own story. You see, why you're creating your own character, and one thing I like about creating your own character is that they try to stay authentic as they can for that time period. And it shows because if you choose to play as a woman, or you're trying, to, or you're born as a, you chose to be born of a peasant, then it's in the beginning you're gonna have a harder time as opposed to being born of a noble, just like it was back in them days. But what's really great about the story in this game is what it lets you do. You can fight for any kingdom in this game. Do whatever you want. Do you want to be a savage, looting and pillaging every town or village you come into? Or do you want to try to seize every castle? Are you going to try to be a nobleman? Who are you going to fight for? That's why I really can't tell you anything in this story. I can tell you my story. You see, my character fights for the kingdom of the Nords. And he's a bastard, really. Not like me in the real life, but in this game, he's a real bastard because... Any town he sees that doesn't belong to the Kingdom of Nords, he'll try to take it. Anything to get glory for the kingdom that he fights for. That's my story. Now, I can't really tell you because it's up to you to come up with your own story in this game. And that's why Mountain Blade's really cool with the open-endedness of the storyline in this game. What to start? The game playing this game is very deep and intricate. Now, let's get started on the things that are not combat really quick, shall we? Just the economy and the way the world works is very great. Certain towns are more prosperous than other towns. And certain towns are better to sell a certain item than other towns. I mean, the, the economy in this game was really well done. And the fact that you can have a stake in this economy. You can, have, you can own certain villages and you can pay out of your own pocket to make them better. A.K.A. make them more prosperous or better set them up for defenses against... Uh, Intruders that try to burn it to the ground and pillage it because it does happen But just how Everything works in this game and it really comes together well and you really can have a big stake in it If you got the money and if you put enough time into it Now what I really wanted to get into this game is the combat because oh my god It is freaking amazing From single one to one combat the way that you have to block their attacks and the way the controls are it is some of the most fluent and, and addictive fighting mechanics I have ever seen in the game but that's not it because you control the army in this game yes the amount of units in this game is unbelievable there are so many different units you can have on your team and you really have to make sure in party management and you really have to take care of them you have to get food for them you have to keep their morale up meaning if you run away from fights and their morale gets low enough and they're gonna keep leaving one by one and they're gonna keep leaving until you start winning fights and it's just amazing how that works in each and you can have companions in this game where they're in your party but they're more personal because they'll tell you if they don't like the fact that you're burning a village down or you're loot or you're retreating but you can also uh, equip them with armors and weapons and it just adds a personal sense to this game this game has role-playing mechanics in it because there is certain skills you can have within your party members and within you you can make them move faster on the world map, things like that make them better at horse riding. There's a lot of different skills in this game for your character that makes it very well. But some of the most fun I had in this game was from Siege in the Castle. Yes, there is so many. You can have 100 versus 100. There could be 200 people on the battlefield duking it out and you have to control them and make sure you win. And it is tough because I thought I was really kicking ass until I found out that the game difficulty was on easy and I ramped it up to higher and I had to learn a whole different mechanic. It's so fun. I've never had this much fun with combat in the game. And not just Siege and Castles, tournaments, practicing, like even just practicing with somebody 
with sticks made this game fun. So yes, the gameplay in this game is very deep and it's very great. And to try to do everything, to try to take over everything in the world, it's going to take you a very long time, no matter who you fight for. So be in for a ride if you're a completionist. Now I'd like to discuss one more thing before we move on from gameplay. The AI. The AI was hit and miss to me. It was more hit than miss though, let me explain. In some areas, I could loot and pillage villages and just walk out unchallenged, even though I wasn't that powerful. But thankfully, in most cases... I was challenged and I was challenged by a big force and I either needed help or I needed to run away and hope that they didn't catch me. So thankfully, even though I had some problems with the AI, it's not the worst, but it's certainly not the best when it comes to certain things around the world. Now fighting AI, when I ramped the difficulty up, they became really hard, so I have no complaints about that. Overall, the AI in this game is pretty good for the most part. Now I mainly have no problems with the sound in this game. The only thing I can complain about really is the amount of tracks. See the tracks that do play like the intro music or the music that plays when you're in the battle. It's very good. I just wish they would have had more. But other than that I have no problems. There is no voice acting in the game but it makes up for in other parts like the, the sound that when your weapon clashes up against a shield or when you're trying to siege a castle and everyone's in this epic struggle and you're hearing screams and people falling and everything that's what makes the sound so great and they make up for it by not having uh, voice acting and it's mostly reading but the atmosphere in this game is very good the time period that they were choosing they executed it very good in my opinion because the way everything looks the battlefields that you battle on the tournaments that there's mad people fighting in this big thing that looks like a coliseum the castles that you go into everything is does it does the time period very well and i have no issues with it so overall this game does a really good job of drawing you into what into whatever character you're playing it made me believe i was this badass character trying to take over half the damn world in the game even though if i was probably like that in real life i'd probably have a problem taking care of a couple of people but it really makes you believe that you're that character and it draws you in very well. And that's one of the reasons why this game is so good. Now my experiences with this game is mostly single player, but from what I have dwelled into the multiplayer, I am really enjoying it. The base game's multiplayer is fun, it's just like the single player but with humans so that always makes it more fun in my opinion but what really intrigues me about the multiplayer in this game is the DLC the Napoleon era DLC which transports you into the time of Napoleon and you have guns and you have lines and you have regiments it's very fun I mean the battles on the online is very epic to me but what really excites me the most is the community the community in Mountain Blade Warband is very great but I'm just being talking specifically about the Napoleon DLC, the community for that is amazing from what I experienced. I mean, there are groups out there that practice a couple days a week and they call themselves regiments and they do their best to fight as realistically as they can, as if they were actually fighting for Napoleon in that time period. I mean, and they're realistic. Let me tell you, they look like a real army that was transported back in time to, to the time of Napoleon. That's how dedicated that this community is to this game. And a great game oh and a great game deserves a great community and I'm glad that the two intertwined. Now Mountain Blade Warband was a game that really came out of nowhere to me. I mean I knew nothing about the series and nothing about the franchise, but when the within the first couple of hours of playing this game, I knew that I was gonna fall in love with it, and I did. I mean, the atmosphere of this game really drew me into it, and to really believe in that, I was this badass that was sieging castles and taking over territory and trying to claim all the land for my uh, kingdom. And when a game can do that, in my opinion, then it's really, it's really good to me because games don't really draw me in anymore like they used to, and this is one of the games that really drew me in like I was believing the character that I really was. So like I said, for that reason alone, and there's other really other great reasons too i mean the gameplay the battles in this game are just epic i mean 
hundreds of characters on the field fighting and you're just caught in the middle of it trying to trying to do the best you can and command your troops to victory i mean that reason alone will ma- i can recommend this game to any of you so yes if you haven't heard of this game if you haven't played this game yet i recommend mountain blade war blade to you any day of the week i mean it's not too simple but if you take the time to learn this game then you will understand it but it's very difficult to master and for completionist i can't tell you how many hours it's going to take you to do everything in this game i don't even know so uh thank you for watching this episode and if you like the content subscribe and uh, have a good day